Hello everyone, welcome to Pumpkin Horror. Now today we're going to be touching base on this mask here. Uh, this mask I ordered a while back and supposedly according to FedEx it was supposed to be here by Saturday but for obvious reasons it didn't make it on Saturday. And then they tell me it's supposed to be here on Sunday. It didn't make it on Sunday. So I know it was supposed to come in today and it did. All right, It's a couple days late only because of the Christmas holidays. Everything runs late because... You got a lot of orders and stuff like that, so that's to be expected. But long story short, we're going to talk about this mask right here in itself. It is the unmasked version of Sam from Trick or Treat. It is a movie that was directed and written by Michael Doherty, which came out in 2008. If you've never seen this movie, you got to check it out. If you're into horror and Halloween type movies, this is a great movie to watch, okay? Sam is very cool. He is very strict when it comes to the Halloween rules. If you disobey any of the rules, guess what? Your death is in inevitable, okay? I'm telling you straight out, <laughs> okay? But anyway, that's a very cool concept, the way they created it. Sam is a very cool character. He's kind of childlike, but, you know, come to find out he's some kind of a creature that's a demon of sorts. Uh, but he's also, you know, obviously a pumpkin type creature and I love pumpkins and Sam is very cool in that aspect the only thing about this mask that I don't not totally don't dislike uh, but I'm not a big fan of it is the light color of it for me maybe a little bit darker tones on the uh, the light parts I don't get me wrong it looks really really cool okay it's a very cool color scheme but for me I just you know would like to see it just a wee bit darker but it's not a bad thing, okay? So keep that in mind. Anyway, we're going to go over this mask. I'm going to show you some of the details in it and in itself. All right? But right now, I want to give you some of the, um, the actual dimensions. It is roughly around 15 inches high from the base all the way to the top of the head. So it's got good uh, reach for you. If you have a big head or <coughs> a long neck, it will, you know, fit in that aspect. Now, putting it over your head, obviously, because right through here is very tight, okay? As it's coming around, you'll see uh, that it um, in itself is uh, kind of tight. But if you can get it past that point, you're good to go because you've got plenty of room inside the mask. It's also got padding in it, so it shouldn't shake and shimmy. I haven't worn it yet, but we will do that in this particular video just so... I can show you what it looks like and what I think about it. Uh, but anyway, long story short, uh, this uh, particular creature that's in this movie is based off the short film of Michael Doherty. He actually created the uh, short film and the creature in itself, okay? Uh, it is on YouTube if you want to check it out. It's probably like 15, 20 minutes long. Uh, the movie is also based off of this uh, particular short film. Uh, it's based off of Sam... From the Trick or Treat movie. Michael Doherty is also the director of uh, Godzilla King of the Monsters. Which came out in 2019. It is a really good movie. If you're a Kaiju fan. You'll love that movie. Um, there were some things about the movie I didn't agree with. I like the way uh, Godzilla kind of totally annihilated Ghidorah towards the end. When he couldn't do it through the entire movie in itself. It's just ridiculous how he did it but. He, he ended up doing it. It's just the way they did it. Uh, but long story short, Michael Doherty is a good director. Got no um, qualms about that. But anyway, the actual sculptor for this particular mask is uh, Russ Lukic. Okay? And with the help of Michael Doherty, he actually gave him uh, one of the actual um, original masks from the movie itself. And that's what they molded this from. So you're getting an exact duplicate from the movie in itself. Okay, that's my skull going off. Don't mind that, okay? All right. But anyway, that's another cool thing too. I'll have to do a video on that now that I got that one working. Um, but long story short, getting back to uh, the sculptor. He's from Trick or Treat Studios. Along with um, Justin Mabry and all those good guys there. They're the ones that created the mask from Trick or Treat Studios. They did the same thing with this one. 
from the exact mold from the movie itself. And Michael Doherty was nice enough to say, here, here you go. Go ahead and make it. And that's exactly what they did. So you're getting an exact duplicate from the movie in itself. Once he's unmasked, this is what you technically would see, okay? Obviously the paint schemes would be different from mask to mask because these are in fact mass produced, okay? Now if they were originally hand painted, obviously they'd be a better uh, situation for them. But because they're mass produced, your paints are going to vary on these masks. And that's another reason why people seem to want to complain about them. Like the Michael Myers masks, they don't have a decent paint scheme, which I can understand because they're mass produced. And they come out completely different towards the end and stuff like that. Uh, but anyway, long story short, let's go ahead and we're going to shut this down. And I'm going to show you what this thing looks like. Now when you put this mask on, I will show you that towards the end of the video. And I'll give you my opinions on that. So we will be right back. So hang on down. Okay, we're back. And now what we're going to do is we're going to touch base. Now I brought it out here in the kitchen because it's easier to maneuver the mask. I noticed when I do it in the uh, my room with all the masks... It's kind of hard to maneuver and give you really good close-up shots or the right angles. Here I can just sit at the table and show you exactly what it looks like. It's so much easier. But anyway, let's start off with the eyes. Now there is another mask that is very similar to this. I think uh, Ruby's does a version of it, but the, the eyes in themselves, as you can see here, are not the same. Those are more, I guess you can say they're painted on. Where well, these are kind of glassy. Okay, so hang on. Let me see if I can get some decent lighting. I'll be right back. Okay, we're back. I had to set up the light so you can actually see the eyes and stuff. And I'm going to show you what it looks like up close. Now, you'll notice that the eyes in themselves uh, are kind of glassed over. Where Ruby's version of it is literally painted on the eyes. They don't have the gloss to them like these do. And that's why I chose Trick or Treat Studios version. Now, the actual design of this thing is absolutely amazing, very scarred-like. Like through here, you get a lot of stitching, okay, especially up in here. And that's very cool right there. So now you can tell this is basically skin that's in the shape of a pumpkin. And as you can see, the scarring, I mean the uh, stitching and stuff. The nose, obviously there's no uh, nose bone or anything. It's just strictly face <laughs> but anyway the strings here these are actual stitchings I grab this a little bit better okay you can see right here okay you can pull on it but I wouldn't recommend you doing that because you'll break it it's just for aesthetic reasons and it looks really cool the mouth does not open as you can see All right. Stitching over here. All right. Also comes with the Trick or Treat Studios label, which uh, shows you Sam in his full garment. Okay, that's very cool. They have an actual T-shirt that has that on there. It looks really cool. All right, and this pretty much shows you the directions on how to take care of your mask and all that good stuff. Let's get into the details of the mask. Okay. As right, so you can see, the nice little crinkles here. Now they say there are some veins coming through here. I am not seeing them from this angle, maybe because of the lighting. All right, but there is some, yeah, some kind of wrinkles here, which is very cool. Okay. Now, like I said before. We will eventually, I don't know what this is here, all this is about. Maybe that's just the way the mask is. Because they said it's an exact uh, mold from the actual um, movie representation. Or the mask mold that they used in the movie. So, I guess that's just part of it. It's not a bad thing, right? Now, as you can see here, it's got those little cr crinks in here. i got to stuff the mask in order to push them out. Okay, but that's what she looks like. Alright, now like I said, I will put this mask on and show you what it looks like once we get done here. It'll be the last thing we do, okay? And that's what it looks like up close. It's cool. The neck. Very cool. I like the looks of this thing. And like I said about the color and stuff like that, it will grow on me. 
I'm already starting to like it because it really does blend well with the other colors, especially around the eyes. It is a very light tan orange color to it, orange hues to it, with some brown. It's not a bad color, man. But uh, like I said, you know, when I visualize this pumpkin head, uh, they're usually darker in nature. Like if, you know, the actual pumpkin head from the movie, Stan Winston, uh, his pumpkin head was actually dark in nature. Well, somewhat, somewhat dark. But anyway, uh, I just visualize them as being darker, but that's just me. This is not a bad color. Now, it's got a little scarring right there. I think that's cool, too. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to shut this down. Well, hang on. Let me show you what it looks like inside so you know what I'm talking about. They do have padding inside the head. Right, lift it up. My coughing container. Oh, another thing I've noticed about styrofoam heads. If you don't order the styrofoam heads with the base on them instead of the straight styrofoam heads with no base, those are very hard to keep your mask from standing. If I bump my shelf, half of them will like topple over and fall off the shelf because they have no solid base. If you get a, a styrofoam head, it is important that you get one with the base on it so it has a solid base so it doesn't topple over on you. Which to me just drives me nuts because I'm constantly picking up my mask when I bump into the shelf or something. But anyway, inside the mask here, you'll notice styrofoam or um, a sponge type material. It puts it in your head when you wear it and stuff. It doesn't bounce around too much, so it kind of gives you a nice little fit. Okay. Now up here towards the back, as you can see, there is padding right there. Oops. Get back here. The mask is in the way. Okay. But you see the padding up in the back there. Now there is none in the front, obviously, because you got to breathe, okay? So now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to shut this off, put it on, and show you what it looks like. So I will be right back. Okay, this is what she looks like. And I'll explain some of the things that I do like about it and what I don't like about it. Okay. It does fit comfortably, but with the sponge inside, it fits really nice. It's a nice tight fit, see? Uh-huh, uh-huh. Yeah. Okay. Now I'm going to shut this off, and I'm going to tell you what I like about it and what I don't like about it. Be right back. Okay, we're back. Now, upon actually wearing this mask, like I said, it's very comfortable to wear, but the visuals in it, the peripherals, they have little eye slits right above the eyes here. You can't see them because they're camouflaged. Now they see real nice as long as the mask is sti um, stiff and snug to your head. You can move your head perfectly and you'll be able to see no problem. But if you're a kid and trying to wear this mask, obviously it's going to be, a, and if you've got a small head, uh, it's going to be a little uncomfortable to wear and you won't be able to see properly because you'll be constantly grabbing it and readjusting it so you can actually see out of it. And that tends to be a problem. But when you make masks like this here, you try to make them as accurate as you possibly can. But you can't actually cut gigantic eye slits out of them. So you can have perfect vision. That's just not going to happen. I think more or less for the most part when they do these masks for collector reasons they are just that it's just for display uh, don't get me wrong you can wear these and when I wore it I can breathe out of it rather easily um, it's not um, what can I say um, it doesn't suffocate you in a way, uh, manner it's not like that at all okay but like I said when I wear it and see out of it it's good but only because I have a bigger head uh, it's snug to my head so I can actually move the mask around with my head, I don't have a problem seeing out of it. So if you got a bigger head, it definitely, or adult size head, it'll definitely work out perfect if you want to wear it uh, for Halloween or special occasions. It definitely will work out for you. But like I said, if you're a kid and you try to wear this and you got a smaller head than the mask, uh, obviously it's going to be a little bit harder to see out of. That's the only thing about these masks uh, that I see when it comes to those little eye slits, the peripherals and everything are out. Uh, they're not perfectly accurate, and they can't be because the eye slits are too small. Now, I got a creature from the Black Lagoon mask. They only have these tiny little eye holes that stick out of it. 
and you really can't see out of it. I mean, the mask is huge, uh, and when you turn your head, the mask stays put. That's how big the, uh, the mask is. So that's got its downfalls, but I didn't buy it to wear it. I bought that for aesthetic reasons to display it. Sam's another one, okay? But anyway, long story short, this particular mask in itself is a fantastic mask. It doesn't have too many flaws. For me, in my opinion, the orange is okay. I would have preferred it to be a little bit darker in tones. When it comes to brown tones, not so much orange. Uh, just a little bit darker in my opinion, but it's not a bad thing what I'm saying. It's absolutely perfect. I chose Trick or Treat Studios because they're more accurate and they have the eyes are much more realistic than Ruby's version. Now don't get me wrong, Ruby's has got a nice looking mask, but it's not like this one here, okay? This one's got some benefits over it. Like the actual mouth being sewn with the um, strings. Uh, that's a very nice touch, okay? I will tell you that. But anyway, I'm going to go ahead and end this here. I will definitely get the other mask sometime mid-January maybe. Um, that's the actual burlap version. And then I want to get a Pennywise mask, but that's that one's a little iffy because that one's like $80, $90 right now. Okay, I'm not big on purchasing or investing $90 in a mask, okay? So with that in mind, this is my unmasked version of Sam from Trick or Treat, the movie that came out in 2008. Like I said before, if you've never seen that movie, you've got to check it out. If you like horror and you like Halloween, it's a great combination the way they did it. Uh, Michael Doherty also, or Duggerty, okay, unless the G is silent, but anyway, uh, Duggerty. Uh, he actually did uh, Krampus too in 2015. I love that movie. A lot of practical effects. Not so many CGI versions of it. Um, more, it's not totally engrossed in CGI like most movies are today. And these are practical effects. The actual Krampus uh, costume. I've seen some of them. They're pretty impressive. Especially when they do Krampus parades. Uh, those are impressive. Man. I'd love to go to one of those things. But anyway, he did the Krampus movie. That's a fantastic movie too. Okay. Michael Doherty's got a very unique uh, look on when, when it comes to horror and Halloween. He does a fantastic job. He also did the Godzilla movie, okay, the 2019 version. Godzilla King of the Monsters. But anyway, that movie was okay. It has its flaws, okay. It was too dark in my opinion. Uh, the fight scenes were good, okay. And they were pretty spectacular with Rodan and Mothra. Ghidorah was super badass in that movie. What I didn't really like about that movie is the way they handled Godzilla. He could not beat Ghidorah throughout the entire movie until they super uh, upgraded him. And Mothra obviously sacrificed herself, gave her life force essence to Godzilla because they have a symbiotic connection. Suddenly he turns into burning Godzilla and totally annihilates Ghidorah in 10 seconds. Okay, I didn't care for that part. Not saying it wasn't a spectacular... Um, uh, scene and stuff like that. It was really cool, but the way they handled it, I think Godzilla should have just fought him one-on-one -on -one until he actually defeated him, because it was said in the past that he actually did defeat Ghidorah. I don't think he did it by himself, because in this movie he kind of struggled with it, and Godzilla is in fact a little bit stronger than he was in the past, so I'm thinking, I don't know how they got him in the ice and stuff like that, but he had to have help. I don't know how. He, he couldn't have done it by himself. There's no way. Because no offense to you Godzilla fans. But Godzilla is not powerful enough to beat uh, Ghidorah one on one. Okay. Not from what I've seen in the movie. Okay. And all the other movies in the past. It was the same way. With the exception of one. Okay. And that was GMK. Uh, that Ghidorah was young. Uh, didn't have enough battle experience. Because obviously he... Just wasn't, you know, it's not a full-grown adult version of Ghidorah. So anyway, long story short, he didn't beat him. Godzilla beat him in that one rather easily in some aspects. Uh, but long story short, most times when you get Ghidorah fighting Godzilla, it always takes a tremendous amount of kaiju to defeat Ghidorah. Now, he's the most powerful uh, enemy of Godzilla. That's a fact, okay? And Godzilla is not as powerful as Ghidorah. But anyway, he kind of struggled with him in that movie, and the way they handled it, 
uh, giving him that super upgrade, and he totally annihilated him in a matter of seconds, okay? I didn't agree with that part, but it was a cool scene, don't get me wrong. But anyway, long story short, Michael Doherty is a great director. I love what he does. Uh, this is my Trick or Treat Studios mask. Like I said, I will get the other one in. We'll do a video on that once it comes in. I do have some other figures coming in. They are Terra Toonies. And one, it's a package of four. One is um, the pirate or the lead. I don't know what his name is. It's from the movie The Fog. It's a John Carpenter movie. That's part of the collection. Also, uh, Elvira. That's very cool. That's the main reason I picked up this set of four is because of Elvira. She is very cool. But anyway, um, also um, two other figures that are coming in. What are they? Uh, oh, uh, the Doctor from the Reanimator. And there is one more. But anyway, I do have a set of four coming in. Uh, it should be coming in hopefully in the next couple of days uh, because I just sent it out. So, we'll do a video on that once that comes in, okay? But in the meantime, this is Pumpkin Horror. Don't forget to like and subscribe and hit that notification bell if you want to see some more videos like this, okay? You guys have yourselves a good night.